Welcome to Prodigy Sport Advantage Stations. PSA Podcast is an unconventional podcast that challenges the audience to think outside the box using real life experiences, clever narratives, original quotes, and the creative use of satire in order to break the audience free from negative paradigms and push them towards their own personal growth. This is by no means a method to condemn or bash the audience, but instead encourage and showcase a different perspective that might not have been seen before. PSA is designed to showcase to the listeners that the power of the mind is not a joke, and if a person can learn to control their mind and their thoughts, they will ultimately control their life. This podcast serves as a means of entertainment and educational purposes only, and not a replacement for therapy or any other type of professional help that the audience may desire. What's going on, everybody? Guess what? You made it, all right? You've made it to the end of the Hunger Games, all right? You made it to the end of Saul. You made it to the end of the role, Boys to Men Voice, all right? But seriously, y'all, y'all have been rocking with me since, really since the beginning of the podcast, obviously, but since March 18th, I think, we've been rocking and rolling episodes, went through a whole album, mixtape album. You know, went through my birthday shenanigans, you know, had guests from all across, you know, big names and upcoming ones. And I'm going to just tell you this now. I I, I can, you can only imagine what I got planned for season six, because, you know, I do big and better every season. But I have my season finale today, y'all. This is it. All right. This is the final countdown before we say sayonara to 2021. And the end of the podcast season for me until next year. All right. So last week was the first part of the Hold On Holiday series. All right. So this is obviously part two and the final part. All right. And today's episode is titled How to Budget Wisely in This Holiday Season. All right. Now, last week we talked about the ins and outs when it came to eating during the holiday season and still remaining physically fit, but then also tie that to real life scenarios. And sometimes during these holidays, we tend to blow off everything. Now I'm still an advocate for people, you know, enjoying their family and taking breaks, but we can't blow off everything completely so that when we get back to normal, we got to play catch up. Cause I've been there before and it's, it's, it's hard to do. All right. The meme reads, you'll get a Christmas gift from Dollar General before I go broke for you. All right. All right. So let's get into that. All right. But before we continue, y'all, I have a guest, somebody who I've been connect, have connected with for a while and I think was the perfect person to call. So let me go ahead and introduce my guest for today. Tell the people your name, who you are, and where you from. Hey, what's up, everybody, man? First off, I just want to thank you for allowing me to get on, man. It's been an honor to get on your show, especially for the season finale. You know, got to finish this thing off right, you know. <laughs> but I'm, I'm Tyron Brackenridge, uh, currently a financial, you know, financial planner. And, uh, you know, just sit down and I help put help put plans together, you know, home, auto, life insurance, and then financial plans, right? And then, uh, you know, f- former um, former NFL player, uh, been in, played in the NFL five years, went up to the Canadian League, played another five years up there, total 10 years as a pro. After that, got into the financial service industry, did that. Uh, for like a year right after retirement. Then I got the opportunity to go back up to the Canadian Football League and coach. So I did that three years and uh, just wanted to get do the financial service thing full time. And once I got into that, man, just everything just started rolling for me, man. It just created a lot, created a lot of free time for me. And, you know, coaching and football took a lot of time away from the family. So, you know, now I'm back rolling with that. But, uh, man, first off, just with that, and just want to thank you again for having me on, man. Oh, yeah, always. So you play in Canada and coach in Canada. So first of all, is is there a big difference between the U.S. and Canada? Uh, yeah, the, the field is bigger. <laughs> you play with more guys on the field. Uh, you play with uh, 12 guys on the field instead of 11. Uh, the field is, uh, I think it's like 60, 60 yards wide or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and – uh, the, the um, NFL is like 53 and a half. Um, you know, it's uh, 100 and, 110 yards versus 100 yards. 
and the end zones are 20 yards deep instead of 10 yards deep. Oh, wow. You know, with, with yeah, in the CFL, you know, I don't know if you've seen arena football, how they get a running start. In CFL, you can get the running start. Um, just like the arena football, NFL, everybody's pretty much stagnant. Only one person moving at a time, emotions and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, so it's a little bit different game, but for the most part, it's, it's, it's the same, you know. Football is football. Yeah, okay. That's interesting because I don't think – I know I didn't know that, and I'm sure some other people didn't either. So yeah. – um, before we get into that, my inspiration, obviously, for this episode is obviously the holiday season, you know, and it's, it's one where it's a little better than it was last year because last year was still, I mean, it's still restrictions, but nowhere near as high it was last year. And in mm-hmm. Texas, everything is normal here. So, right. um, you know, there's that. California, pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. you know, I, I want people not to. St- I want to strive not to go broke in this holiday season. You know, it can mm-hmm. you can easily go broke. I've done it. I've seen it. And it, it's 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 hard to recover from. And that's what was the purpose for last week's episode with physical fitness and staying fit during the holidays. Because I've also been there, somebody who, like I said last week, I said again, who had lost a lot of weight and then got to the holiday season and had gained a whole bunch of it back. And then now you have to play catch up because, you know, you, try, you got to try to, overwork yourself to get back to where you was instead of not saying there's a way to indulge and still not overdo it. And that's kind of, again, the point of this episode too, where you can indulge financially, but still not overdo it. And then my other source of inspiration comes from Proverbs 28, 26, whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool, but he who is who walks in wisdom will be delivered. All right. So when you hear the word holidays, what comes to mind? First thing. You know, holidays, that's the, Supposed to be the, the the best times of the year, right? You know, uh, when 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 you know you're thinking about the gifts, you're thinking about family time, you're thinking about the food, you know, uh, the the time shopping and uh, time off, you know. Um, and a lot of people, when it gets to this time, they worry about finances, man. You know, um, and I, I know this is where it's leading, but this that's a that's a huge thing when it um, huge thing when it comes to you know the holidays is finances yeah. and uh one thing you you did mention you just like i'm trying not to go broke on the holiday you know during this time well i mean we don't have to go broke but i think we're it's a mindset that's been instilled in us from a very long time just like watching movies and and things like this you want to get in the holiday spirit so you know most people they go out and decorate the house you get the christmas lights and the Christmas trees and you want to have this Christmas. And then like, I guess with us, we want to be, we're in that position where we got to feel like we got to get everybody a gift. And not only that, when we have our own kids or things like that, we want to go over and beyond because it's Christmas, right? You know, it's gift giving. You want to go doing all the shopping and stuff. And, um, you know, for somebody to say, you know, like that little meme you pulled up and, you know, you'll get something from Dollar General for get nothing at all type i mean hey what is it's nothing wrong with that you know but we have it in our mind that just people want to spend you people want the designer things they want you know um whatever the 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 jordans the you know the ps5s and all that people want all that stuff at the same time uh whoever's paying for this if you have it go for it you know, but if you want to be smart about your finances, this is the biggest time of the year where a lot of people set themselves back financially. Yeah. You know, they're going into debt and they're trying to go into the new year. It's just like, you know, you hear that saying, new year, new me. Nah, it's, it's new year carrying that same debt with me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's that's that it, it is not much going to change because you're carrying that baggage along with you, right? Um, I, I just think we, we just have to be smarter when it comes to our finances. Like we don't have to have everything, you know, if your if your finances allow you to do certain things, go for it, you know, but stay within your means. And, you know, that phrase, uh, that, that, that phrase, uh, trying to keep up with the Joneses, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. You know, there's, there's a lot of different things that we can do to, you know, for our loved ones, as far as gifts. I mean, you can simply make things. You can, you know, keep everything, you create a budget for yourself. You know, this is what I'm doing in my household. This is what I can afford to get outside of my household. You know, $5 gift cards to Starbucks. Yeah, that adds up, but that, it saves a lot of time. You know, it saves a lot of, you know, finances or whatever, you know, and 
and and you just gotta make sure you got people that's appreciative in your family, man, and that that accepts what you bring. But we we can't we can't feel like we have to go over and beyond to you know give everything that we we want to give. Because I mean I know a lot of us, especially in this time of year, we we're, there's a lot of people that want to be giving. It's a lot of people that want to be receiving. But we got to do it within our means. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny because that goes into my definitions for this week. So the first definition is budget. It says an estimate of an income, all right, and an expenditure for a set period of time. And then I went ahead and defined why. So it says having or showing experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So let's go into more detail about what it is that you do. So you said you are a financial um, planning planner. Okay. Is there a difference between... Okay, is there a difference between that and a financial advisor? What is it? As advisor pretty much manage uh you have assets under management. So you're dealing with people who invested money and uh you're just managing those assets and you distribute them in different, you know, portfolios for them. Okay. Okay. So give us a day-to-day <laughs> -day, like how how your schedule looks, how 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 you how would you go about being a financial planner like you wake up, obviously, you got to wake up. And then how do you go about your day? So basically, I mean, it's just like normal day to day what I do. I don't I don't have to go in the office. I, everything is, you know, pretty much, you know, 100 percent virtual. You know, we can just do Zoom. Sometimes I sit down with clients in the office, you know, if need be. But for the most part, nobody really want to go anywhere no more if they have access to, you know, Zoom or whatever. But um. You know, it just depends. It uh, every every day we with our team we do accountability meeting, you know, um, and help you know our our reps generate, you know, meetings and clientele and things like that. And then also we we bring in our numbers daily and just kind of a motivational thing. And then it's just based on you know what my schedule is like. I sit down with a client, and depending on what their needs are, you know, I try to fulfill that for them. So I always you typically what I do is I sit down with a person and I just Put a plan together um, we do a thing called a financial needs analysis a digital program and all i'm doing is just inputting information how much are you bringing in monthly right uh, what's your expenses monthly what's your debts you know um what's any extra you know income that you may bring outside of you know your your, your normal job um what are what are other things what are your subscriptions like your, your netflix and with how much you going, how much you spending from groceries, and then we tally up everything. I mean, absolutely everything to where we see: Are you in the green every month, or are you in the red every month? And a lot of us, especially during the holidays, it's 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 more month than money. You get what I'm saying? So as soon as they get them checks, that money is gone. And a lot of times, you know, sometimes people get paid biweekly, and you know they get that first that check on the first of the month. That thing is washed up. Right. And then they get that check on the 15th of the month. That check was already washed up before they even got it. You know, so that's the thing. Like a lot of people, we we're very good. We very, very good at spending money we don't have. Yeah. Very good at it. You know what I'm saying? And 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 that's something we have to be very mindful about. Right. So the biggest thing is is stand within your means. Stand within your means. Create a budget. Be smart. Right. If you can't. It, it, I mean, and if, if great credit cards are great, but you have to know how to use them. You have to be, you have to know how to be disciplined. Most people get credit cards of like, you know what? I can pay this or I can, I can make my payments on it. Making payments on them, great. They show that you're making payments on time, but guess what's going to kill you? That interest. That interest is what's really going to kill you. And you're trying to make these minimum payments and they're just stacking more and more and more. Some people are fortunate enough to use their credit card and pay it off at the end of the month. You know, that's what I like to do. I don't I don't like to use my cash. You know, I think I think debit cards are probably the most stupidest thing, honestly, because there's no security about it. You lose your debit card. Somebody goes in and take all your money back. Right the banks are not going to replace that money for you. You know, you lose a credit card. Somebody run up that credit card. You call in. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. This boom, boom, boom. I want to report this. All that junk get funded right back to you. You mm. walk around with a debit card. You know, so if you're if you're disciplined, that's how you have to do things. You know, if you're one of those people who has more month than money, meaning that you're in the red every month, you're gonna have to reevaluate your spending. You're gonna have to 
anyway to spend it. You know, I, we all want the nicest things. We want the nicest cars. We all want the nicest clothes. But if it's not there for you, don't don't go for it. There's going to be a point in time if you put this, if you run a proper a financial plan for yourself, there's going to be that time for you. If you're at a job and you're you know that this is what you're going to make every month, no matter how hard you work, maybe you might need to rethink your profession. You know, maybe you want to do something that's going to bring you extra income. You know, if you want these finer things. So now you're going to have to do something else to help generate that income for you to, you know, fund that habit or of spending. Yeah. You know, and, and it just comes down to discipline. Yeah. 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 And I and I agree. It's funny because you talked about how people go, they get their check on the first and then the 15th. It's weird because I just transitioned to a job where I'm getting paid twice a week or twice a month. And when I was getting paid once a month, it seemed easier to manage. I don't know why it just did. Now that it's every two weeks, it's kind of like, I don't, I don't like that. Even though it is, it's literally the same check. I, I mean, it was a little more, but I, I liked it better when it was once a month. And most people hate that. And I thought I would too, but it seemed like it was easier to do for me. I don't know why. Do you think that's just a mindset thing? Or you think that's just like a, a personal purpose, I should say, or... You know, what do you think? It comes down to preference, personal, personal preference. It also comes down to mindset, you know, which has to do with the individual. And also it comes down to discipline. Yeah. How are you managing your money that month? Because yeah. some people know you get that money that month. And then once it's gone, I know I'm not getting any more. But if somebody get half that and then they know they're getting some, some more, that's, that's a whole different feeling for them. Yeah. Because I'm getting paid again. You know, that's why I like the profession I'm in. I can get paid every day, <laughs> you know, every day. So it, it's it's pay it, it's based on my production, my work, you know, my team's work, my team's production, right? And when you're in a set system to where that, you know, somebody's scheduling your time. Days off controlling when you and when you can't leave you know and 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 now you have to put in overtime mm -hmm. and, and and then and then on top of that you got uncle sam in your check your taxes are different you know there's you the things you can't write off you know so there's a lot of there's a lot of pros and cons with you know working a nine to five yeah you're gonna get that steady paycheck but you're gonna be putting in a lot of time, you know, yeah. like I have, I have a good friend. He make good money, makes great money, you know, and um, he's working hours after countless hours, nonstop, overtime after overtime, overtime after overtime. And his, his monthly checks looks great, but I'm like, where's your time? Yeah. He, he, he has, um, he, he, he has a lot of money, he has no time. And then so his time is shopping online, buying this and buying that, buying this and buying that. And I'm like, bro, we, we structure this. Yeah. You know, things that you're gonna have to do. And, 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 and you know, you can, only, you can tell only tell people so much, right? It, it literally comes down to want to, and then having the discipline to continue, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Would it come to that? So it, it's 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 no different than uh, having that GPS. When you when you when you put your when you put an address in that GPS, it tells you exactly how to get there, right? Yeah. yeah. When to turn, turn after this light. You know, well, our our the financial plan we put together, this financial needs analysis, is pretty much the same thing. We put I input this information, and it'll tell you how many years or what it'll help to get out of debt. You know, it'll tell you. Um, with how much money you it'll free up at a certain time, how much money money you can invest, you know, oh maybe it tells me if you might need to generate more income, then I'll create that business opportunity for you. Like it tells me everything. It's just like when you go to the doctor and you get those vital signs when you get your blood work. Yeah. That's good with you and wrong with you. Yeah. So and with that, it's just funny because it's funny I'm doing these episodes because I'm in a Pay spaces in my life or pay, I guess, 
a place in my life. I can't say that word for some reason. But I'm at a place in my life where obviously, like I said, the last week was about physical fit. So uh, a little bit of our story, I had lost 40 pounds, right? And so I lost it, but I kind of got comfortable just being like that. And so then it's like, okay, we need to take it up a notch. And then it's the same financially. Like, that's why I, I, it's funny because even though these episodes obviously going to cater to the audience, in a sense, I felt like both were kind of, in a sense, interventions for me. And just for me to see like, okay, how I need to basically increase in discipline in both areas. And doing it both them areas is just going to know going to take it to a whole new level, which I've already started which is good. But, you know, like say for instance right now, it's some stuff I want to buy, but I'm like, okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the thrift store and, you know, because thrift store, if you know how to shop, you know, you can find some stuff there, you know, get your fits for $20, find you five, six shirt. Not no pants, not buying no pants from the thrift store. I'm not knocking nobody that do. I'm just uh, Yeah, I hear you. I mean, you have a preference. <laughs> but, <laughs> Personal preference. <laughs> But I mean, you know, some shirts, you know, little stuff like that. You know, I go get that and then, you know, you know, put it together and then it be fly, or whatever. But everybody can't do that. Uh, shoes, I'm not buying shoes from thrift store either because they, they probably, they lean and I, I don't want to lean in shoes. I'm not going to be working <laughs> in the But you know, just kind of finessing the system in the sense where it's kind of like the best of both worlds. It's kind of like, okay, I'm getting what I want, but at the same time, I'm still not blowing a bag. And it's hard because especially with the holidays. So how do you go about the holidays before I say, well, I'm going to say this first and then I'm going to ask you. So when the holidays come, we always seeing this sale. You be like, mm, I'm going to need this for this holiday. Oh, I'm going out of town in two months, in a month and a half. Let me go ahead and get this shirt now. Oh, I need this. I see that. So, you know, some people, I mean, it's easy. Some people are like, oh, I don't care about stuff. That's great because you don't care about how you look. Some people don't. And, and that's terrific. I got a friend, you know, I ain't a friend, but somebody I know, they don't care about how they look. They spend all their money on food. So, you know what I'm saying? Everywhere they go, they try something. You know what I mean? And then they, you know, they try to shame other people. Like, oh, you know, y'all buying all them fancy clothes. Everywhere you go, you get a plate. You ain't even home. <laughs> <laughs> I know. In fact, I lie. I know a few people like that. So, how do you go about the holidays? And so, uh, because it's like, we know you're the financial planner. So in a sense, some people may say, you know, let's get to this question first, then I'm gonna, um, then we're going to go to the next one. So how do you go about the holidays as far as, you know, your family and stuff like that? If, honestly, you have, I have a big family. Not everybody's going to get everything. You okay. know what I'm saying? Not everybody, may not everybody get nothing but a simple, hey, happy holidays, love you. Boom. That's just, that's just what it is. I have a 10, 11 year old daughter who well, she just turned 11 uh, a couple of days ago. And, um, you know, Hey baby, put your list together, you know, and within that list, she going to get it. I'm, I'm going to send that list to her mom. I'm going to send that to both her grandmas, her grandpas, aunties, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So she's, she can get with it, what she want out of those lists or whatever. But I mean, of course I'm going to, you know, get her, a few things or whatever, but my, uh, I don't have to go outside my means to make her happy. You know what I'm saying? And I don't have, but I'm, I'm very fortunate for the daughter that I do have. I mean, it, it, she's a lot like me. It don't take much, you know, to make her happy. She, she's at that age where she just wants clothes. You know, her birthday was just the other day and clothes, shoes, you know, she's simple. That's all I could do. Or she wants money. She likes to save her money, you know, and things like that. Cause she hears me talk all the time. Like dad, I just want to invest money like you do. You know, um, I tell her that she has a investment account and she don't really a savings account and she don't, I'm sure she don't really, she understands, but she don't understand. Right. Yeah. Um, so, but there's some, there's some things that I'm actually trying to put into play for her, um, as a Christmas present. Um, so we'll see how that all turns out. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I literally, I don't go on my means. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, you know, as much as I can to have more money than money, yeah. you know, so that way you don't have to worry about it, man. You got to understand, like, um, you know, people have that mentality. It's like, why well, have all this money? You can't take it with you. You're right. You, you can't, you, but you can definitely leave it behind for your loved ones, for them to start their, you know, endeavors. 
you know, and, and it's, it's, you know, you gotta be selfish, especially being a parent, being an adult and whatever you're doing it for and who you're doing it for is that's how you got to look at it. Yeah. And if you, if you, if you have it, if you have it financially, man, you know, be smart with it and, 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 and live it up. But if you don't, I mean, shoot, what, 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 Hey, nothing wrong with looking nice, but do you, do you have to, you get that one check and then now you buying Jordans and, and all this designer stuff and it's gone. And, and I'm not trying to knock nobody who doing this, but it just doesn't make sense to me. Like it's sleeping on the air mattress. Don't have mm-hmm. no furniture in your house, but you got all this gear. You know, I know, I know a lot of men and women like that, yeah. you know, taking all these trips, you know, bills is barely getting paid, you know, um, I know a lot of people, you know, you got people with all these fancy cars, but, and, and, and it's staying in an apartment, you know, like we got to think about certain things. It's like, you want to pay all this money on this car payment when you could have been putting that down on a house, man, and, and building your equity, you know, getting these tax write-offs. So it's just, it's all about making these smart financial decisions, man. Live, live within your means. It, everybody doesn't have to have the, the finest things. I went through that point of trying to, but I remember back in, when I was playing my rookie year, I changed my whole wardrobe to all the, you know, the Christian attaché, they're wearing the creative Rex, you know, the true religion jeans is a little older, you know what I'm saying? So all this was, it was popping, you know what I'm saying? $250 for a t-shirt, a thin ass t-shirt. You know, three hundred, four hundred dollars for jeans. You know, and and buying all the creative wrecks and everything to match the shirts and everything. Just doing all that stuff every Tuesday. We got paid. I was out shopping. Boom, 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 and was doing all of that, man. And and like, I remember. I think it was like my second, third year in the league, and I was just like, I'm not doing this no more. I had the chains, and 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 I and honestly, I had my chains were fake. They look mm-hmm. real as hell. And me being in the NFL, everybody thought they were real because I was in the NFL. Man, people like with some of my boys on my team, like, hey, man, I'm going out to Vegas. Let me get those chains. Here, go for it, bro. Take them. You know what I'm saying? And even even with the mindset of having a fake change, man, I, I didn't – I literally didn't um, – I got I got out of that phase quick. Like, man, I don't yeah. need to wear no change. I don't, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't want that. You know what I mean? Like, I – I remember I bought my, my first truck, 2007 Chevy Avalanche, 2007 was, was my rookie year. Got that Chevy Avalanche when they changed to that new body style and had the 26 inch rims on it. I mean, plush, I had it, I had it, you know, wet, you know? And I drove that car from 2007 to 2016 before I traded it in for a BMW. Those certain things that I, I I I made those decisions. Like when I played ball, I spent a lot of money, but at the same time, I invested a lot of it as well. You know, and uh, Izzy, I, I one of this crazy. My uh, one of my cousins just made a post on social media, and and they said the best broke feeling is when your money is tied up in investments. So that goes into my next question. Who do you for so investment for dummies? All right. So I wish I made a banner for that because I would I should have. But investment for dummies. So for somebody who's never invested, first of all, where do you think they should start? The easiest things right now for somebody who's never invested any money, I think the best way to go is mutual funds. That's just that's just just pure just vanilla. You know, get you a mutual funds account you know, and, and, and just start doing that compounding interest, man. Putting it, I'll say, man, if you put $200 away, say that you start at the age of 25 and you put $200 away a month, right? You'll be well over a million by the time your retirement. I say about 35 years later, it's $200 a month. We live, simply spend more than $200 a month on a bunch of miscellaneous things. We spend in, we, we put in, Every weekend you go out to eat, you're going to spend at least 70 bucks, you know, the drinks. And then, you know, and then that's, that's, that's the pre, that's the pre phone. And then you go after, you know, you're, you're, you're clearly, you know, spending more than $50 a week and that's 200 bucks a month. You know what I'm saying? You could definitely put that away, you know? Um, and, and if, I, I tell people that, and if you can't put 200 away, put a hundred away. If you can't put a hundred away, put 50 away. You know what I'm saying? It's so put $50 away. You'll be surprised what you will have. And then by the time you accumulate, 
to a certain dollar amount when you're, you're the more money you start to make the more you can't put away keep your plan to, uh you got to keep a plan in place man you you want to keep your your debts low and your investments high man yeah period yeah i i think even with me with like with the whole podcast thing and and, and just with in, in life i think that god won't allow us to go to the next level until we beat this one and i feel like some of us who want to go to those other levels and things you can't go because you ain't ready to receive this amount of money yet because you can't even handle this much. So it's like, I think that's the lesson for this generation. And I ain't gonna lie, I know a lot of people who, you know, aren't doing a lot of investment and they, you know, stacking their bread, you know, um, legally and illegally. And, you know, <laughs> you know, more power to you because, I mean, you getting it. I just, you know, but what I will say with that is I think it's just a lesson for just generation because I think because you um you know like you say you talked about the true religions and the creative wrecks. So I was in high school and people was wearing stuff like that. And I remember the wrecks, it was a spot in St. Louis that I used to sell them. I just thought about this today. That's crazy. And it was a spot in St. Louis that used to sell them on the low. And people would be like, oh don't tell nobody where you got them from like on some weird stuff. Like we used to do stupid stuff. And I remember back then it was just so crazy because it's like all of these places now, the Stock X and the um, what's the other one? I was just on it today. The Stadium Goods and all these places and uh, offering these afterpay, quad pay, and all this. Now I seen a TikTok a while ago, some months ago, and it was like basically saying, "Yeah," which I know some people who mastered the quad pay and the afterpays and stuff because it's just like you know, and, I, and, and I've done it a few times, but. Do you think those are a waste of time? Honestly, I'm not too familiar with the quad pay and stuff like that. Okay. So after pay basically is after play corner, the quad pay, all of that. There's basically you buy something that you know they send it to you and you pay it in fours. So if it's a hundred dollars, it's a way plan. Huh? Pretty much. You receive it and you you make payments on it. It's like a level way plan. Yeah, virtual layaway. I feel like those things are okay every so often, but a lot of times what people do is they do it on four different sites at once. So then uh, <laughs> they look up and they think they got a little money, 40 gone, 20 gone. It's like um, the TikTok, like they do the song with the no money, like they fall, they do like that, like that. Hey, that's how it would be. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah, the thing, oh, go ahead. No, that was it. I was just gonna say. Okay, what was so yeah, so basically, this is this is my thing. It it all comes down to you know you using a credit card, you max it out. Now you just making your 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 minimum payment. That money got to come out. That money got to come out, right? And then obviously it's going to hit you, your credit, or something's going to happen if you don't make those payments, right? Do you receive the products and then make those payments, or do you make those payments before you receive the product? So what happens is, so say for instance, I buy something, $100. They're going to take 20 now, and then in two, in two weeks, 20 more, two weeks after that, you know, like that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if that's if that's what your budget allows you to do, go for it. I mean, if, that, if, if, if that's something you truly want, I can't buy it all up front right now. I can do it in installments. That would be better for me. I, I don't have nothing against that. You know, I mean, you know, if it, if it's something that it's a part of your budget that you can, you know, do that, all gravy. You know, I look at it like this: like, okay, if you you wanted something that bad, why not pay yourself first? You know, why not pay yourself first? You put that money away in a mutual fund, and and this is the thing. And I'm I'm, I'm for the crypto. I'm for all that. I'm for crypto. You know, um, if you if you have. Um, different type of investments I'm, I'm 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 all for that you know what i'm saying the nfts i'm all for that man i'm actually looking in all that stuff you know to you know for myself you know for my financial investment advancement you know but um if you have that extra to be able to put this away put that away do this pay yourself first when you're investing you're paying yourself you know you're just putting away now for that greater return later yeah you know Put that, put, pay yourself. Like that's what we 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 want to pay everybody else. We want to pay Nike. We want to pay you know 
whatever the, the gear is out there. We want to pay, you know, wherever you shop. You know what I'm saying? We want to pay all these people, but we neglect ourselves. Man, invest that money. Because think about this. If you put your money in these mutual funds and emergency happens, guess what? You could pull that money out with no penalty. You don't have to pay that money back. You know, you don't have to pay that money back. You know, but you're constantly stacking. If you need to put down for a house, you've been saving that money up, boom. Pull that out for the house. You know, emergency come up or something happened to the car. I could pull that money out and pay for the car. You know, yeah. things like this. Look, you've been investing all year. Guess what? Now it's Christmas time. Guess where you can pull that money from? Your investments. Boom. Now you can have the Christmases and stuff you want because you've been paying yourself all year. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, you're getting a, a greater rate of return. It's compounding that interest. Yeah. We have to understand that once we, once we learn how to be disciplined enough to pay ourselves first, our financial situation will be a lot better. That'll relieve a lot of financial stressors. And I think the biggest thing that people are scared that they don't have that money that they can touch right now. You know what I'm saying? I told you guys the, the best broke feeling is when your money is tied up in your investments. You know what I'm saying? That's the best broke feeling because when your money is tied up in investments, you can always pull out from that investment. You know what I'm saying? Of course, we'll want to pull out, you know, on top, well, if it's doing well, if your investments are doing well, you can pull out on top, you know, mm -hmm. but you pulling out on these emergency purposes, you know, live within your means. You can still buy your gear, go, you know, around. Okay. You've been saving up all year. Christmas time is where you get all your gear together, you know, and, 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 and you have your winter gear and then, you know, six months down the line, you've been putting away your money, putting away the money, expenses low. You get, you get your taxes. My, you, when you file for this, is another thing I tell people. Take a little bit for yourself on your taxes. If you need to, you know, if you had anything that you need to pay up, whatever, pay that up. But people get that tax return money and do what? Crab Low. legs. <laughs> you know, eating, eating the finest places, buying all the finest gear. Man, put that money up, invest that money. Cause then that's yeah. a large lump sum. So think about, think about, you know, that interest rate. When you put in that large lump sum of money, right? Yeah. versus that interest rate when you put in a, a, a small amount of money. It's going to be a lot greater, right? The more money you, 10% uh, is better on $100 than $10, right? Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what people have to understand, man. Put that money away. Don't even touch it. That's what I tell people. Don't even touch your tax returns. Don't do not do it. Put that thing away and, and let that sit, sit, and let it sit. Yeah. Build, let it build, let it build that interest. Let it build that interest. And then you putting away every month. Cause think about it, you didn't have that. Now, if you you're in a financial situation and you gotta pay, you gotta catch up on bills and this, that, and the third, well then use that for that. Put you back in a financial, you know, thing. But like think about this. At when when did you first when you how old were you when you had your first job? How old am I? I'm 27. My first real job, I think I was like 17. 17. And you got a tax return check at 17, right? Okay. Okay. The first time I got a tax return check, I was 19 because the job I was doing was on some working for a family member's like little shop and I was cleaning up. So it was just like some, here you go. But the first time I got a tax, I was 19. So yeah. How much was your tax return check? Um, it was a few hundred dollars. It wasn't a lot, but it was a little sum. It was a little sum. But think about if you just took that few hundred dollars and you put it away. And you said you're 27 now, right? Yeah. So think about this. So you 27, you you're 19, you 27. What is that? Uh, nine years ago. Yeah. Roughly nine years ago, something eight, like that. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Eight years ago. Eight nine years ago. Okay. So. Yeah, um, the same, same. <laughs> <laughs> So check this out. If if you was to do that every year, you got a tax return check. Every year, no matter mm -hmm. what it is, because I'm sure based on the caliber of job, you got a little bit more. Yeah. Right. If you was to do that every year, I promise you, you will have from ten to we have about at least twenty grand, at least twenty grand right now, twenty to thirty grand in your investment. Okay. And possibly more if you were contributing every month. 
But I'm just saying, if you were just to do that, 20, about 20 grand, and you just put that in every year and didn't touch nothing. Yeah. And then add no more. So these, well, these are the things that are financial gains. We got to understand these financial rules. We got to sit down and educate ourselves. I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of things on social media that we can sit and listen to, you know, and they're, they're telling us what it is and, and how it is. But you, until you actually sit down with somebody and they educate you on exactly what your money is doing and showing yeah. you what your money is doing and how money works, you know, you're not going to get anywhere. We could sit here and listen to all these, you know, all these financial literacies all day. We can definitely do that. And it's great. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Especially men like us, us black folks, we need to hear these things. But not only do we need to hear, we need to act on it. Yeah. We need to find, we need to sit down with people who are actually doing this. And that's the biggest thing. Like we, we're, we're, we're scared to talk about money when it comes, because finances is a very shaky top, top subject, topic, whatever. But we're scared to talk about it, but we're not afraid to act like we got it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, we big and bold when we want to stunt. Like, man, oh man, I got this. I ain't broke. I ain't broke. Well, if you ain't broke, then how much is yourself every month? You know, what, what, what is your, what does your investments look like? What's yeah. your bank account look like? You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to understand, we, we quick to act like we got all this and all that, you know what I'm saying? But we, we, but when it comes down to it, man, we got to really sit down and, and put that, that we got to run the play, you know, yeah. you know, they always say, coach, put me in the game. Well, if you, if I'm going to put you in the game, you got to run the play. Yeah. Don't act like you in the game. Don't be that dude. You know what I'm saying? That don't get in the game, but just just got a uniform and then walking around campus with your Letterman's jacket and acting like you the best thing smoking. It don't work like that. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It don't work like that. You, you, you're not gonna you're not gonna get that scholarship. <laughs> you're not gonna get to the big bag. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. All right. So we talked about debt. We talked about you know budgeting, investing. All that good stuff. So when we think about finance, we think about debt. And it's just a quote from according to the negative effects of debt. They said being in debt can affect your goals. When you're living paycheck to paycheck, that trip you want to take, visit to friends or the house you want to buy are too far to reach. It's time to analyze your spending. Are you stopping for a specialty coffee every day on your way to work? Are you grabbing a sandwich each day from the local sub? Are you and your friends socializing at a local restaurant on a regular basis? If you really look at where you're spending money every day, there's a high likelihood that there is five to ten dollars every day that you could save, and those dollars add up. Are you paying high interest on credit cards? You didn't say that. Look for a low interest credit card and consolidate all of the debt to the card. This could add up to thousands of dollars every year. You should have cut your other credit cards. You don't want to end up in the same situation. Keep your eye on the prize and the long term goal. Okay, so with that, the long-term goal, and, and and I think that's what stumps us. Last week, um, old boy Pat, who was on here, he talked about how he keeps his goals written out in front of his face every day. And that's something that I had, I, I teeter-tottered with. So one thing about me, I can keep short-term goals with my long-term. I have some, but I really just, you know, I kind of fade off with them. But they stay there, but I don't really like looking at them every day. And I want to make a habit of looking at them every day. And it's to the point where I seen a picture that I put on my phone of me, and I didn't like how I looked. And I said, you need to see these every day when you think you're about to go OBE. Look at this picture every day. And then you're going to be like, never mind. All right. <laughs> so I think that's, that was, that's good for me. And I think that's good for everybody to keep their goals in their face. Um, because it's kind of like the horse and the carrot. Like you're going to keep running towards it because you see, because sometimes we can have them goals and we forget them. We write them down. We good. We, you know, we with the Gusco. We them them three days, that week, that two weeks, we own it. Then we just fall off. And I want to be make sure for me personally that I'm on my stuff now because I'm, I'm putting myself out there publicly now. So now I kind of have to live up to it. So we're putting yourself out there publicly. When you kind of got into where you are now, financial planner, all these things, did you kind of say what you was going to do or did it just kind of just naturally happen? Um, it, it was something that I wanted to do and I said I was going to do. And there's some, you know, like, publicly I say I want to be a financial advisor and I haven't passed all my tests yet you know to become and you know 
and then it gets frustrating. You're studying, you don't pass. You're studying or you're studying and you fall off and you got to restart up and boom, 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 boom. And then, you know, you get busy doing this and busy doing that. And then it's like, dang, it takes away from this. It takes away from that. Um, you know, it sometimes we're, we're we, it's so much that we want to do. And it's so many places we want to go. It's so many things that we want to accomplish, but yet we're all over the place. So sometimes like the strategy you was talking about is writing things down. And, you know, a lot of people always want to put their end goal, you know, put their end goal down. And when you just put your end goals down, a lot of times it falls off. Mm -hmm. it, it fades away. So what we have to learn how to do is we have to learn how to make goals that's going to get us to our ultimate goal. And what we fail to do and it's okay to celebrate our small victories. So if it's like, hey, I got this test coming up or, you know, and I had and I had to do this, to, you know, to complete some of my tests. It's like if if I if I want to complete this test to get this license, okay, I have to put in X amount of hours each each day to study. Yeah. That's going to be how many hours a week, right? So if I got my two hours, two, three hours in the study in that day, that's a small victory. Cause I reached that, what that goal for the day. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and we constantly, we, and we lose sight of that. Just when you're starting a business, you know, when you, you start this, you've been doing your podcasts, right. You know, after a while, like it, it seemed like, dang, it's not going nowhere. Well, they say a podcast, you got to put out at least a hundred episodes before you even get recognized. You know what I'm saying? Like, dang, it, it don't matter. If nobody's watching, I guess what? I guess what? people are going to eventually start watching them. You know what I'm saying? People are going to eventually start listening. So we have to celebrate those small victories. I got another video out today. You know what I'm saying? I got another recording out this week. You know, boom. That was that was my four for the month. I'm, I'm going. Yeah. My goal is whatever, with X amount for the year. I hit that. Boom. You know what I'm saying? You got to celebrate. We got, we got to celebrate our small victories. It gets to a point where it's like, man, I'm busting my ass and I don't see any results. Yeah. Cause we lose sight of those small victories. Damn. I, I, I went a week without studying. Fuck. I'm behind. Damn. I got to start all over. No, no. It's pick up. Just do a quick review and pick up where you left off, you know, cause we're, we're always, it's always going to be a point where, we're going to feel like we're, we're not even, we're not, we're not pushing the, 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 the ceiling. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We're not raising that ceiling. We're always going to feel like, man, this is getting heavy on me. It's getting heavy on me. Well, when it's getting heavy on you, we got to understand that that breakthrough is coming right now. You yeah. know, that breakthrough is coming right now. Like it's, it's coming, but we got to constantly keep fighting. And I'm, I'm guilty of that sometimes. You know what I'm saying? When we talk about our mental health and things like that, like I've been going through like my struggles of becoming a professional athlete, changing into to going through the transition into the, uh, my new career, to the financial service industry, running everything else and then rebuilding and starting over. You know, that's that's taxing, man. That's taxing on the mind, making a certain amount of, you know, a money a year to where now it's like I'm starting from the ground up. I got to rebuild. That, yeah. that, 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 that's rough on us. And so what we have to understand, and then a lot of times when people are not seeing those results, guess what? They quit. And then they just go back to the regular nine to five job. And then now you're miserable and, and I hate my job and I'm stuck here at this desk or whatever it is, you know, and then, or, you know, it's, it's, or some people are working a job and then trying to build their business or they feel like, you know what, I got to stop this and do this. And then now we're all over the place. If you do that, which is fine, you got to still create that plan. Got to create that plan. Got to celebrate those small victories. Always set small goals to lead to the ultimate goal because now you get to see your progression and what to celebrate, man. It's tough, man. It, it's, it's very tough. You know, you go through, you deal, I, I deal with the anxieties. You know what I'm saying? That, and my anxiety leads to, to, you know, my depression, isolation. And there'd be times where I just don't want to get up in the morning, man. And I'm tired. You know what I mean? And I'm, I, I'm unmotivated. I don't want to talk to nobody. You know, dealing playing ball, I, I get bad migraines, you know, and things like that. And it's like, I don't, I feel like I can't be functional. And then when I take my migraine medicine and, and now I'm all drowsy and, and I, I want to sleep, you know what I'm saying? And then there goes my day. But there's things that we have to kind of do to celebrate those small victories. I was in a position where, and sometimes, I, I mean, I still feel this way, where I'm very productive during the day. 
But if I don't see any results, then I'm bad. I'm going hard on myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially when we dealing with, you know, when people are dealing with depression, man, if you're dealing with depression and you get up that day and you able to wash your ass, brush your teeth, make you some food, man, celebrate that. That depression is real, man. That anxiety stuff is real. When you ain't, you, you just work, you just all of a sudden just start worrying about God knows what you can't sleep and you just up heart feeling like it's about to bust out your chest. You know what I'm saying? You get through that, man. Celebrate that, man. That was just temporary. You know what I'm saying? I can still keep pushing. I got to still talk to myself like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I got to still do that. You know, that's just part of life, man. You know, everybody think like you making all this money, but man, still, you still, we still got to deal with these issues with, with more money. There's, there's more, more things to come about, you know? There's, there's a lot of stressors. We, we see, we, we see that we see the glamour in these celebrities. We see the glamour in all of this, but we don't know what they're really dealing with behind closed doors. And that's why so many of them, I mean, have committed suicide or have done these things because people think, you know, more money is easier. But I mean, Biggie said it, more money, more problems. And, you know? and it's crazy because, you know, you know, nothing affects your mental health more than that. I have no money You're trying to figure out how you're going to pay some bills. And you see TikToks of people laughing and making jokes about it, like my, how my mama was looking when she was trying to uh, pay the bills. She was a lady was smoking a cigarette, looking like, "How am I gonna do this?" And that was a joke. I mean, but it's one of those we laughing at our pain type things because that's that's really how it is was for some people's families, and then some for some people now when they like, "How am I gonna pay this? What am I gonna do?" So some people out here that's part of your mental health because now people feel like they gotta go hit a lick, they gotta go. Do a tap in, P20K tap in. They got to go, you know, rob somebody. They got to go borrow somebody, borrow some money from somebody who's going to throw it in their face. And so it's just like, it's so many things that it's just like, what do you do? And that's why it's best to now I'm learning the beauty of, you know, well, see, it's kind of a double whammy with me because me with me not wanting to, to really get serious about the body change again so like i said it was already 2.0 now it's about to be 3.0 <laughs> um <laughs> curious about that and then saying you know what it's certain things i really don't want to buy no clothes because i know if i'm gonna be looking different i'd rather you know wait till then yeah. and, and do it like that you know so that that's kind of a double whammy for me and then it's kind of like you know i mean i it's a rush that people don't talk about but it's a rush you get when you know you can spend some money you choose not to or you just kind of like, nah, I'm good. I'm going to just wait, you know, because the thing yeah. where you want to buy stuff, no matter what it is, it'll always come back. The only time I believe in just splurging and just giving yourself that is, and not even with like shopping or nothing, not like, not that, but like if you out of town and it's some food, that's different because it's like you out of town. But if you budget you wise, budgeted for that. Right. You prepare for that. So that's why I feel like it's times like that is OK. And then with the holidays, like you said, if you didn't invest and did what you're supposed to do, you can splurge now because you didn't say you didn't buckle down. Now you don't have to go in the bathroom and then smoke cigarette, wonder how you're going to get your kids something so they ain't going to school getting talked about because everybody else right. got something to them. Yeah. And, and a lot of times, man, like, you know, it's, it's the, the sources is out there. A lot of people just don't want to put in the work, man. I don't, some people just don't, don't. And it's like when, when we, we talk about life insurance and stuff like that, right? You, you got, you got, you got people out there with families, you know, who insure their cell phone, who insure their car, but won't protect their income by insuring their lives for their loved one. Yeah. And it's like, and when, when things get tight, when things get tight financially, and if they do have a life insurance policy, that's the first thing they cut when things get financially, when they get in that financial struggle. Well, why are you keeping your, why are you keeping your car insurance? Cause look, if, if like, if your car get messed up, the life insurance, I mean, your car insurance is going to pretty much restore your car, help you get your car fixed or maybe possibly get you a new one. Right. But who's operating that car? What happens if somebody has something happens to you and you operate in that car? What, what's yeah. what's going to restore you? Nothing. There's nothing that's going to be restored. Guess what? Your income, the, that income is no longer coming in once you once you die. That income dies with you, right? So yeah. now, if you got kids and, and a family left behind, now you just you just created a, a, a debt. 
literally you just created a debt for your family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You just put them in a, a serious financial situation because it's like now whoever you left your kids behind now, they're going to have to struggle to help take care of those kids. But if you was able to put a policy together, you're not only protecting your income during your working years, you, you, you know, God forbid something was to happen. You're leaving something behind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why we also got to understand the importance of having a will. You know, the importance of investing and things like that. Like people, our goal, we all want to own a home, right? Yeah. All own a home. But think about this. We we want to own a home. We buy, we, we put it down on the house, right? And say, God forbid, something was to happen to you and you just purchased that home. Guess what? Because people think once you buy a home, you're creating generational wealth now, right? You got something to leave behind for your family. But if that home is not paid for, guess what? That bank is still owning that home, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not going to buy a home outright cash. So God forbid yeah. something was to happen to you. Now, now you put your family in a position to where now they're about to lose this home. Because they may not be, they were that home was also dependent on your income, right? Mm -hmm. So learn how to protect your income. You know, like people say life insurance. I like to say income protection. Because you want to protect that. So you 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 paying a small amount, you know, anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks to, you know, to, to get 300,000 to, you know, 500,000 in coverage, you know, to protect that home. So now, God forbid, anything was to happen to you, right? That 300,000 is going to help you keep, or 300,000, 500,000, depending on where you live, it's going to help you keep that home because now your loved ones are able to take that money and pay off that house and possibly still have some left over. Yeah. Yeah. Home that's paid for where your family can have that, you know? So these are some things that we, 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 we got to take into consideration. It's God for you. You want to buy a home, but you don't want to protect your own life, your, your, your own income. So now instead of creating a generational wealth, you created a generational debt. Mm. And that's, that's, that's going to be the quote for the episode. Not generational wealth, but generational debt. <laughs> All right. So um, from bettermoneyhabits.com, it says it's 10 shopping tips for the holiday season. Now, we're not going to go over all 10, but we're just going to go over like five. And I like these ones. So the first one says value your relationships. It says write in everyone you plan to give gifts to from nearest and dearest to your in-laws and the mail carrier. Now, that's funny because you already said earlier, like, I got a big family. Everybody don't get nothing but a happy holiday, a here, now, and a doubt. All right. The second one, it says price check with your phone. I don't take advantage of that, but I do think that's a good one to try to, you know, I know foot, the different shoe stores do it. I want to say Foot Locker does enable, and they do something like if it's cheap or somewhere else, we'll, we'll pay you, we'll let you pay for what you were paid for there here. So you that, that look into that. The next one says buy last year's electronics. I agree with this one because... For me, especially with the phones, I don't like getting the fresh new phones. Like even with the PS5, I'm gonna get one eventually, but I like to let them the electronics come out first because it seems like a lot of times the first few ones be like bugged out, and I ain't got time to be buying nothing. And granted, and somebody's like, "Well, you get warranty, or you pay warranty for," and I get that, but that that's time, and I don't feel like doing all that. Time is money, man. Exactly. The fourth one says, know about Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Now, this one, I like this one. It says, because chances are you started hearing about door buster deals back in October. It says, but studies have shown that it, there isn't a huge difference in markdowns between one-day promotions and regular holiday sales. It says that instead of focusing on event-style sales, look for deals every day. And I agree with that. A lot of these places, they're going to have another deal. The Black Friday deals if you really pay attention to it, would really don't be that big of a difference like you think. So, now, I'm not going to lie. Them TVs, them Walmarts, the Target, nah, <laughs> them be some deals. Them, it do. It do. Them be some deals. But a lot of these other places, not so much. Then I like this one. It says, consider making gifts. Homemade presents are a great way to save money while creating something memorable. These gifts might not work for everyone on your list, I was going to say, because a lot of times I don't want no homemade uh birdhouse from sticks i don't want that just just give me five dollars and give that's what i said it, it really depends on the person you know what yeah. i'm saying like i said that's if you if you're not creative like that I, five dollar starbucks cards go a long way you know what <laughs> i'm saying you give them you give them a five dollar starbucks card and, and a holiday card you know so i mean 
and, and some people don't don't want that but some also people got to understand your hey it's financial situation like listen hey i would love to give you more but i just want to hey here's a you know happy holidays it's the least i can do right you know okay so moving into the this segment all right y'all so i've i've kind of pre-warned y'all going into season six that it's going to be a revamping kind of like um PSA is getting a, a facelift. We're getting some surgery going into season six. And as I told you, I'm pre-warned y'all that, you know, my demographic is young millennials and the youngest millennials 25 now. So there is no point of this segment anymore. So this is the last time you're going to see this segment, tips and scenarios for my college students. So I'm going to let him kind of piggyback off. I'm going to start it. But my tips and scenarios for anybody in college or tips for anybody in college financially, save your refunds. Bro, I remember getting refunds. It was one refund. I was already, right, I got $5,000. And you're not paying for housing. All I had was a car note. What? There's no, re like, if I knew I was going to be a podcaster back then, I would have been bought all my stuff. I wish I would have known. But I just say, say them refunds. That's my and eating the calf because it's free. Come out in them tuition. And a lot of times we try to go eating at the McDonald's and the restaurants and stuff. But like, you can guarantee get three minutes for free. And I wish I would have skipped it. Huh? You said where I went to college at? No. No. But for the people who get a scholarship, y'all really big chilling. I was on scholarship, and if I had known better, I'd have, I'd have saved a little bit better myself. Yeah, um, but it, it was it was what a time, what a time. So you got any? Um, and then I'm trying to think of a scenario that I can think of for the college students that I think when it comes to a lot of situations where you are saving money. As again, it's mental health. So a lot of counseling therapy is not. For my school, Texas Southern University, it was free back then, but a lot more schools now because of the way mental health has gone. A lot of a lot is more common for these schools to pay for it, be in the fees. So you can take advantage of that. So many things that's free. It's free doctor, free, um, free food, free, you know, therapy in case some cases, some school, a lot of schools. What else is free in college? There's so much that's free that we really don't realize until afterwards, unfortunately. So just gotta be able to take care of our sources, take advantage and, of our sources. Yeah, and, and and I think that's what we 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 lack. And hopefully this generation, you know, hears that more. So that was the final segment for that ever again. So now we move into my favorite segment. All right, and uh this one gonna continue, all right, because this one this is a good one. All right, so I do game time, it's time for game time, and with game, game time, we all know that every segment, every game time is specifically, you know, spe it's specialized or it's, it's a special. How am I trying to say this? Okay, I'm getting tongue tied right now. But basically, it's, it's made for the guests or the guests, whoever they are. All right. So it's something only you can do. Okay. So I'm, it's called financially advised this. I have four scenarios and I want you to tell me. How would you financially, you know, plan or advise this? All right. Okay. The first one. All three of your kids want a PS5 and two games for Christmas. And they all want their own separate gifts as well. What you doing? I want the PS5 and separate gifts. Through my budget is like, you know, okay, you know, so you definitely that's the first thing you just have to check your budget and what you're able to do. Now, if I'm financially able, you know, I will get, you know, the PS5 for the kids, a couple games, and you know, something probably, you know, one, some, one thing for each, each, each one. Um, and but if I'm not there, um, you know, if, if financially I'm able to get the PS5, that's all they're getting in the games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but 
um, and I'll make that work. But uh, other than that, if I, I can't get that PS5 right now, I'll get them all what they want and then eventually work on, you know, putting away for the PS5. So, um, yeah, so it really it just comes down to your budget and what you're able to afford financially. All right. So you want some new shoes and some new clothes, but you only have a two hundred dollar budget. How are you going to finesse that? A new cl new clothes, new shoes. Uh, shoot, I'm going to tell you just like this. Depending on what your, your, your style is, uh, with $200, I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm sure you can get you a nice little fit. And, you know, you can get you some, some, some cool little, you know, H&M. You could probably go, you can get geared up at H&M for 200 You know, get a nice little shirt, some pants. And they got shoes hanging up on that little, little little rack thing right there. You know what I'm saying? You can. You get, what's the you get what's the Chelsea boots? You can get you. So they got some of them in there. You can, you know, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure with two hundred you can you can you can squeeze out a few things. Um, shoot, hey, don't sleep on. I would say don't sleep on Target, but Target some of their stuff kind of expensive in there too. So you might get a better deal out of H and M. Um, but you just got to know where to go. I think if you you do that, you. you probably go to forever 21 or h and m or something like that 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 would be my go-to see target didn't caught on because people didn't talk too doggone much and they were getting on these instagram <laughs> posts talking about some i got this shirt from target now you're not target said so i bet so now we finna raise the price since y'all didn't caught up oh, since y'all niggas didn't caught on <laughs> you got something for y'all now now it's we the same for everywhere else. yeah man all right. caught up man <laughs> all right so you're a foodie you like to eat and you know you you're trying to get serious about your budget for the time being. So you're giving yourself a lot of two hundred dollars for food for the whole month. All right. How are you handling that? Is you straight grocerying it out? Or are you gonna go? Are you gonna be one of the people that go every two weeks, like hundred dollars this two weeks and then another two weeks, hundred, or is you one of them that's like I'm gonna go every week and stock up and get different stuff that way. So you're gonna make that stretch. Uh, I think that's gonna go a lot, lot farther than you know being a the foodie and going out to eat. Because think about it, especially being a dope, we also want that adult beverage to go with it, and that's what really costs. You know, because because anytime you be like, oh, I'm just gonna get one, nah, because that one give you that. Oh man, I need another one. And then another one got you feeling good. And then you next, you know, you look at your bill, you're like, ooh, I, I have four of these. You know, like, so now I, I will I will actually I will do the grocery, the grocery route, you know. Uh, you know, I I I spend, you know, I do the $150 on groceries and, and buy me a $50 bottle. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> so look, y'all, he just gave y'all a plan. He just gave y'all a whole thing to do. All right, the last one. So basically, you're trying to pay for school. You can't really afford. So are you going to hit the route of, I'm going to just take out the money for a, a school away? Or are you just going to say, let me community college it up first and then go away later? But, but this is my thing with that. Not always. A lot of times people who do these community colleges, they, they never leave. They say, oh, I'm going to just community college for two years, then I'm going to go and they, they double leave. So what what you thinking? Uh, I, went, I went to junior college first before transferring. But, I, I mean, I went, you know, play sports, so it made it a lot easier for me in getting a scholarship. Um, if I was just paying on uh, school, man, honestly, I, I will go my financial aid route. I'll see what I can get with, with financial aid and see what it can take care of me for there. And then knowing if this uh, transferring is something that I want to do and plan on doing, you know what, my focus, if I wasn't playing sports, would be just trying to get that academic scholarship transferring over. You yeah. know, we can try to get all these different grants. I mean, there's a, and there's, there's a lot out there. There's a lot of different grants and resources out there. Like I said, we just got to, you know, take advantage of those sources and, and put ourselves in those positions to, you know, further our education if that's what we want to do. Um, but there's also, you know, the biggest thing out there and that's very accessible and, and pretty much free is YouTube. You, whatever you're trying to get into and whatever you, whatever you want to do is it's all on YouTube, man. And there's, there's different things, different ways where you can get certified, get licenses and, 
and, and, and build your career that way. Um, I'm, I'm big on education, but at the same time, man, a college degree is not needed. You know, and that's the thing. If you want one, that's great. But it, it, the way the world is, like I said, it was needed for me and what I'm doing. I still tell people all the time, I think my college experience was 70% the experience, 30% the actual degree. That's just me. But <laughs> hey, that was with me too. <laughs> them experiences was needed and it was only going to get done there. But, you know, I, I mean, you know, that's just, that's just how the cookie crumbles really. So I was more 80-20. You said you said eighty twenty. Eighty twenty. <laughs> All right. So this is for my last and the final question and challenge for the year twenty twenty one. All right. Now, um, as we go into that find the next week. All right. I'm going to be adding up how many of y'all did the um, the question and challenges. And of course, we know we're going to do the spin the color wheel with your name. The more times you enter, the more times you get a chance to win. I'm not doing gift cards this time. I'm actually getting y'all the free belligerent hoodie. Okay. So, you know, I'm I'm sure if you wear I sell shirts, belligerent t shirts, and then I'm doing hoodies pre order. But if the person wins this contest, they, the $45 hoodie is going to be for free. Whatever color they want. And all I got to do is take a picture with it and tag me. So the question and challenge for this week is what are two ways you plan to budget? Why is it this holiday season? And then my challenge is I challenge you to cut back. Even if you saying I'm only cutting back $50, that's still something because you never know. Look, my car has some incidents this year. You just never know when something crazy going to pop up. So before you go, thank you. First of all, thank you publicly for your time. I think this was a good season finale. It was very insightful. And it was needed. And even though it's the holiday season, this, these gems can go for a lifetime. So, is there anything you want to pull or say before we get up out of here today? Again, I just want to thank you for the opportunity and allowing me, you know, allowing my voice to be on your show, man. That's uh, this is awesome. I I admire and uh, appreciate what you're doing, man. It's also, you know, doing it for the culture. I already know, and um, you know, we definitely got to give back, and we definitely got to, you know. Uh, open up as much as we can to let everybody know, especially our culture, man, that it's okay to express yourself. It's okay to go get help. It's okay to educate yourself. It's okay. The sources are out there. You know, we don't have to portray. It's going to be okay. You know, yeah. and um, that's the biggest thing, um, man. I just, Hey, I'm out here. You can, you can, you can follow me on uh, Instagram. It's uh, at T Brack. I'm on Twitter at T Brack 41. I'm on Facebook, Tyron Brackenridge. You can find me if you need if you need me. I'm here. I'm here to educate, answer questions as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, make sure you guys continue to tap in, man. This is huge, man. This is huge, man. We we constantly we need this, man. So keep keep lifting your voice, man. Keep creating opportunity, and uh, keep let's make it happen, man. Already, so y'all for the last time in 2021, I'm telling y'all, 2022 is going, it's going, it's going down. Uh, but PSA signing out. Always remember, keep your head up like your neck hurt. Remember who you are, and finally make your mind up. Don't let it make you.